Day two of the European Championships in Glasgow and after day one's qualifiers in rowing and cycling, the first medals of the Games were up for grabs. Fans in Scotland's biggest city had the chance to see some of the world's top sports stars at the Sir Chris Hoy Velodrome, Strathclyde County Park and the Tollcross Swim Centre. Highlights of day two are on the way, but first, an indication on just how excited the city is about the event. We've got a fantastic 11-day programme of sport. We've got a number of championships, 12 individual sports championships across the piece, um, ranging from aquatic, cycling, rowing, triathlon, golf and gymnastics, as well as a world-class cultural festival running alongside. Obviously this uh, European Championships is very different in the fact that you've got so many different sports happening at once so I think the main focus for each individual athlete will be to focus on their job and if that obviously helps towards the overall team total then that's a great thing as well. It's massive, it's massive to have a, a sport and event of this sort of magnitude uh, taking place in Scotland, the sort of build up beforehand, the the effects it has on everything in Scotland is sort of wider afield, but in terms of a sporting spectacle, to have the sort of your top athletes um, competing in Scotland um, is just fantastic. I think we're just looking forward to the city coming alive once again and seeing these elite athletes perform at their best and give us some historic moments for this historic event. Welcome to Glasgow. I hope you have a great time. Good luck. OK, Europe, um, welcome to Glasgow. We hope you have a fantastic time and uh, haste you back. Welcome to Glasgow and the European Championship 2018. We begin our roundup of day two with synchronized swimming. Russia took the first goals of these championships by winning both finals on the inaugural day at Scott Stun Sports Campus. Reigning world champion Svetlana Konashenko added another gold medal to her collection, this time in the technical duet routine with Varvara Subatina. What a fabulous swim there from the Russian pair. Love that routine. The Russian pair won by a score of 95.1035, almost 2.5 ahead of Ukraine, followed by Italy. There was a tighter score in the mixed duet with Russia's reigning European champion, Alexander Moltsev, and his new partner, Maya gurban Berdiva, winning by a small margin of 0 0.880 points. Huge congratulations to the Russian pair who take the European crown again. Italy grabbed its second medal of the day by taking the silver and Spain rounding off the podium with a bronze medal. Earlier in the day, 13 teams were competing at the team free preliminaries. Russia, who have topped the Olympic podium in the free team at every edition of the game since 2000, were the ones to watch. Here they come. This is Russia, the favourites. Wow, that was absolutely phenomenal. They performed their free routine to a score of 95.500, leading the field by 2.0667 points ahead of the Ukraine, Spain and Italy before tomorrow's final technical round. The first medal of the day in the Sir Chris Hoy Velodrome was in the women's 10 km scratch final. Last lap and it's going to be a cavalry charge. And the Brit is right up there as well. Emily Kay doing her best to try and come on the outside. This is going to be a terrific finish up towards the line. Well, that was an absolute thriller. 
So the gold medal goes to Kirsten Wilde of the Netherlands. Emily Kay of Great Britain takes silver, while the bronze goes to Julien de Hoor of Belgium. In the men's 15km scratch final, Roman Gladish of the Ukraine came through to win the gold. So just a couple of laps to go, and it's Garrett from France ahead of Gladish from Ukraine. And now these two are going to have a battle. This is the last lap. And it's Garrell in front. Is Gladish going to attack? As they come off this bend, he's going to have to. Garrell digging deep. Gladish trying to come on the outside. Up towards the line. It's really tight. The Ukrainian thinks he's got there. Looked like a photo to me. Very, very close. But from the fist pumps, it looks as though Roman Gladish believes he's seen off Adrian Garrell. In the men's team pursuit, Switzerland were surprise finalists after coming back from a huge gap against France in their heat earlier today to meet Italy in the final. So the Swiss now down to three. So they have lost uh, Frank Pasch. The Italians still going great guns and showing no signs of slowing. It's almost going to be like a, a victory lap, this. Just one lap away. And it's been a stunning performance. This Italian quartet has dominated the event from start to finish, and they come home for gold. And the bronze went to Great Britain. The British women's team of Laura Kenny, Katie Archibald, Eleanor Barker and Nia Evans were chasing their first gold medal of the Games in the women's team pursuit, where they faced a strong Italian team. Trying to wear them down in the middle stages of the race, past halfway. And they've got themselves a half-second cushion. It's not much, but it might well be significant. And the Italians straight away sensing the danger, have cut that advantage. So it's going to be desperately hard to call. It might be a case of which rider, or which team, has a rider drop off first. One lap to go. Four tenths of a second. Crowd trying to play their part, beg your pardon, it's one lap and a thousand metres to go, I'm getting carried away here. Half a second is the advantage for Great Britain at the 3,000 metre mark. And they've just stretched it there. A statement of intent, trying to really dig into the stamina of the Italians and test them. This is where the lactic acid starts to build up, this is where it starts to hurt. And they've sneaked a little bit more daylight there. Another two tenths of a second. And now it's over a second. And we've only got two laps to go. And they're still together as a four. The Italians have had Paternoster fall off, and their third rider is adrift. And Great Britain here are going to bring this home in front of their home supporters. One lap to go. And it seems a formality. They were pushed all the way for the first 3,000 metres. Since then, it has been one-way traffic. This is what the home crowd came to see. And it's going to be gold for the host nation. Britain win the women's team pursuit. And a brave second place for the Italians. with the Germans taking the bronze medal. In the women's team sprint, the gold medal race was between Russia and the Ukraine. When it really matters, and it really matters now. Russian Federation ahead by about half a second. 
So now the final lap. It'll be Voinova for Russia. And she's looking really good. Against Passover. It's going to be the Russians. 32-4-5-2. Virtually the same time as they did in the first round. And they have been able to reproduce it when it really matters. Gold for the Russian Federation. Ukraine take the silver. And it was bronze for Germany. It was also a bronze for the German men in the same event. In the final race of the evening, it was France versus the Netherlands. So we've come to our final event of the evening. Final of the men's team sprint. Maybe the Dutch just fractionally at that 125 meter marker. But the French trying to fight back and there's very little in this. They're going really quickly, so first rider's dropped off. Now the second, it's down to a one lap race. And it's pretty competitive too. I think the Netherlands have the edge, but we'll check as they come to the line. And the Dutch do get there. And by almost a second. Well, they've been the best sprint team here by some margin, and that gold medal is thoroughly deserved. From the cycle track back to the pool now, and we caught up with three of the swimming stars to watch over the next seven days of competition. It's always exciting to be uh, racing for, for Italy, racing in a big competition, so I, I just, just can't wait to, to swim. It's almost like a world championship for me because um, Romanchuk, uh, Wellbrook, they, are, they have the, the best times in the world this year and we are all Europeans, so it's like awards, but it's better for me, you know, when you come here, you, you want that, that competition, like, so much better. It's in between two Olympics, so I think most of the teams have the best team possible because you are in the middle and you want to you wanna go fast, so I think it's going to be a great competition for everyone. I have uh, been training very well for a long time now, and I'm very excited to finally race. I have uh, high expectations on, on uh, myself now, and I, I feel like I can swim some really fast times in my event, so I'm very excited. Uh, the European Championship is always it's a big uh, competition for us in Sweden, and uh, I've been winning this competition many times. My first gold medal was 2008 in Eindhoven, so it was 10 years ago, so it would be really cool to maybe come out maybe with another gold medal 10, 10 years later. So that would be really, really cool. I'm looking forward to obviously racing the home boys, but racing the rest of Europe as well. Two years out from Tokyo a few days ago, so this is a, going to be a, you know, one of the kind of final building blocks as well as 2019 next year in South Korea World Champs. We'll go out there, see what we've got, hopefully bring back a few wins, but you know, there's no pressure on my back. Multi-sport, you know, it's, it's almost like a, a mini Olympics. Commonwealth Games was exactly the same, Europeans, the first of its kind, so it'd be great to obviously race on the European stage with all the other sports as well. The afternoon session in the pool began with the 400 meter women's individual medley final. Frances Fantine Le Safra was the favorite after posting the quickest time in qualifying. Oh, on a line here, Halamani digging in, Le Safra knows there is danger lurking every which way, but she extends those arms and the first goal of the European Championships in the pool will go to France. And a new French record for Fantine Le Safra. But our winner and twice in a day she has broken the French record after the heats and now the final for Fantine Le Safra. Mikhailo Romanchuk was the only swimmer to qualify for the men's 400 meters freestyle in a time under three minutes 47 seconds and the Ukrainian went even better in the final. 15 minutes to go he is struggling but he's got enough ahead of everybody else to get to the wall. This will hurt, but 
It'll be jubilation for Romanchuk. 3.45.18. Representing Ukraine, Mikhailo Romanchuk. Early birthday present for Mikhailo Romanchuk. In the first women's 50-metre freestyle semi-final, Dane Pernilla Blume created a little bit of history. Closing in on the world record, that's a new championship record. One of the stars of swimming, Sarah Showstrom, was in action in the other semi-final and led the field home. Irish swimmer Shane Ryan continued his good form after winning his heat in the men's 50 metre backstroke. He came second to Robert Andre Glinta from Romania and qualifies for Saturday night's final. It was a busy day for Sarah Showstrom, who continued to progress through the rounds this time qualifying for the final of the women's 100 meters butterfly. 56-66, that'll do. Job very adequately done by Shell Schostrom in the semi-final. The men's 100 meters breaststroke semi-finals were some of the most anticipated races of the day. In the first heat, James Wilby produced one of the performances of the games so far. Wilby's giving himself a lot to do, but here he comes. Wilby is flying through this field. Shimanovic just about to be overtaken. So too is Kaminga. Wilby has come from fifth at 50 to go on to win this, and he's going to win it quite comfortably. What a swim! 59-2-3 for James Wilby. His compatriot Adam Peasy was not to be outdone. The British swimmer almost broke the championship record for the second time today. 57.89 it was just a few hours ago. PT is going for this big style. Slightly slower. Bit anticlimactic maybe. Slip just outside that championship record but Shubkoff. There was more drama in the women's 4x100 meters freestyle relay. The Netherlands had qualified for the final with the quickest time but they face stiff competition. Coming now, last 15, the Dutch are right alongside. France are holding on for grim death, but I think the Dutch might get there. It's tight, it is France who get it by half a second, less than that in the end, four tenths of a second. And rounding off the session in the pool was the men's 4x100 metres. The teams were evenly matched until the 200 metre mark of the final when the Russians took control. They ended up with over half a second advantage and took gold. It was another busy morning on the lake as Strathclyde played host for day two of the rowing. There was a number of repechage races with teams looking to qualify to the next stage, along with the semi-finals of the men's pairs at the end of the session. The men's quadruple skulls kicked off proceedings with world and European champions Lithuania looking to qualify for the final. Yeah, they're fighting for it in the Ukrainian boat. They've upped their rate to 43 strokes a minute to hold off the charge from the Russians. But the Russians, I think, easing back now as they can see that they're not going to get one of those first two all-important slots. So Lithuania, great showing from them, crossing the line first. Ukrainian second, they're going to take those two slots through to the A final. And the Russian crew finishing there in third, unfortunately going to miss out and it will be the B final for them. Holland and Romania got through to the final in heat one of the women's quadruple skulls repechage, but it was a trio in heat two that delivered the best finish. 
Italians now up at 42 strokes a minute, responding to this Russian charge. Russia staying ahead of them. They've responded 43 strokes a minute. Great Britain holding on to the lead. And Russia now reeling the Brits in as they're fighting off the charge from the Italians. It's going to be a win for Great Britain. Very little separating Russia and Italy on the line. Just Russia taking that from the Italians. The women's double skulls was next, with four from six going through to the final. France, Italy, Czech Republic and Poland all qualifying. The men's fours repechage saw a good battle between Italy and France in Heat 1, who along with Romania and the Czech Republic from Heat 2 all progressed through to the final. The repechage finished with the men's eights. Italy, Britain, Romania, Russia and Poland with the five boats battling out for four positions. The Romanians continue to lead this in the final stages. Oh, they got clear water on the British. Great row from the Romanians. They really look classy, don't they? And uh, they the a... Polish crew back in fifth have started to raise their rate. They really want that fourth place to take the qualifying slot through to the A final. They're about half a length down on the Russian crew alongside them. Just see that on the bottom of the picture. But the Romanian crew here are going to take the win. Fantastic showing from them. They're going to cross the line in first place. They've got a length ahead of Great Britain in second place. Italy third. Russia hold on to that fourth and important qualifying slot. The morning session culminated with the two heats of the semi-finals of the men's pairs, with the first three from each race going to the final. Yeah, the Croatians look to be leading this race as they have done in their heat, where they beat Lotto and Montroni. the Romanians there in lane four who's sitting in third place ahead of Great Britain sitting in fourth the Romanian duo Tudosa and Cosmic we've seen them racing earlier in the season they finished fourth in Belgrade regatta but here's the Sinkovic brothers out in front the Romanians now coming back on the Serbians dragging the British with them and Rosta just goes up again, still at 41 strokes a minute, 5.2 metres a second. Romanians are at 5.3. The British still haven't found the extra gear. Yeah, the Romanians taking it up. They're moving up on Serbia now. Romanians up at 44 strokes a minute, reeling the Serbians in with every stroke. And now they've drawn level to take second place. Can the British get a toe off the Serbian boat? It's a lot to ask. There's about 20 strokes left. Vasic and Bednik, they just are really struggling now. And then a Bednik looks around for the finish line. The 29-year-old uh, Serbian can't wait for it to come soon enough. Britain are closing on the Serbians, but I think it's going to be too late. I haven't got the overlap yet, but there's about 10 strokes left. Too little, too late from the Brits by the look of it. Romania and Serbia are up at 40 strokes a minute. Romania at 45 strokes a minute, but the Sinkovic brothers holding off this charge. They're at 40 strokes a minute as well. They're going to take the win. And the race for second place, so close between Romania and Serbia. Romania just getting the better of the Serbians with that final sprint. So, we move on to the second semi-final for the men's pairs. The Belarusians are just heading their neighbours from Russia, Stradev and Shupalov, who came with a really strong burn at the finish. This Dutch boat, again, that rather low-slung style of the Dutch stroke man, Sander de Graaf from the Theta Club, 23 years of age. Yeah, the young five brothers, they've had a great season in the pairs so far, picking up a bronze medal in Linz silver medal a couple of weeks ago in Lucerne. Yeah, they like to rate high, don't they? They go over at 40 strokes a minute. I mean, you can see the Irish. O'Donovan and O'Driscoll, they're up at 42 already, and they will try and go higher. They hit 47 yesterday in the sprint for the line. It's not beyond them, the final place. So that would be sensational. Yeah, the Dutch really going for it, throwing everything at it up at 42 strokes a minute. They've got a couple of metres to make up on the Belarusians, but the French storming out in front, Italy still in second place, Belarus in third. Seems like the Dutch charge has just narrowed off a bit. The Irish are absolutely going for it in lane six, up at 46 strokes a minute. But it's going to be France with Belarus taking second place, Italy in third. Netherlands just floating across the line for fourth. Irish take fifth. Great race from this French crew. It'll be fantastic to see them racing the Sinkovic brothers tomorrow in the final. So a great day for the Enfoy brothers who look very strong heading into the final of the men's pair. That wraps up our highlights of day two at the 2018 European Championships. We'll see you for more next time.